Friends, we are glad to have you back with us. Um, like I said, it's, uh, this is more family time than anything. And um, we have both um, our plenary speaker and our preachers with us tonight. Um, you know, they, they've just been good, so oh, yes. good to APSI to say yes to everything. And we want to, we've had a chance to talk to Paul right after um, his sermon. And we want to get to Paul, but I want to start with Warren uh, just a little bit. And I know many of you still had questions you wanted to ask. Uh, but before we have Paul or uh, Warren answer any questions, Warren, uh, give us a fun fact about yourself that most people won't believe. Well, once I ran a half marathon by mistake, I signed up for a 5K and then I ran and I, I missed the turn and I ended up running and my friend said to me warren when you didn't you sign up for the 5k i said yes he said the turn was three miles behind you oh my god <laughs> and so i ended up running this thing and it's the only medal i've ever got in my life for sports so I, I i have it hanging in my office and i'm so proud of it but yeah it's a funny story that i don't tell people very often <laughs> <laughs> not bad not bad and share with us just a little something about your family Yes. So one thing that I really love about my family is uh, we are, my, my parents are divorced. My mom lives in England and my dad lives in South Africa. And whenever we have Skypes, aside from saying, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me all the time? <laughs> uh, you know, we, our Christmases are so interesting because in South Africa, it's beautiful and sunny. And, um, you know, my cousins and my family is swimming in the pool while my mom is freezing by the Christmas tree in England. And we're in Texas where the weather can be a little bit confusing. Um, but, you know, we're just a virtual family living all over the world. And, and that's sort of something we've learned to adapt to. That's great. That's great. Well, Warren, can I start you out um, with one of the questions that was submitted today um, from one of our participants? Um, when we're doing outreach to our local communities, how do we present ourselves as an equitable church where they can find belonging without coming off as performative. Mm -hmm. So we're doing outreach. How do we present ourselves as an equitable church where they, f where they can find belonging without coming off as performative? Yes, Anything uh, come to mind there? Yes, I think that's such a, an important question uh, because when we think about the church and we think about the structure the building of the church, often we have to ask ourselves, how, how strong are those walls, both to hold up the church, but are they barriers or are they, are they, are they doors? Mm -hmm. you know, how, you know, and the question for me is, um, you know, when we think about the relationship with one another and with communities around us, uh, the question is, is always, uh, what is the nature of that relationship? And when somebody says performative, um, what they mean by that, I just want to make sure we understand what this word performative um, outreach looks like. Performative outreach looks like when folks go into a community that they may not have a relationship with and hand over things, maybe teddy bears, and take pictures and leave. Hmm. Under the guise of feeling really good about themselves, but not really thinking about um, the folks that they're interacting with. So I'll, I'll tell you a story of myself. So growing up in South Africa, um, I used to play board games after school with some of my friends. And one time a tour bus from the US um, stopped and the, tu the tourists got out and stood around us and started taking pictures of us. And when they left, they, they, they gave us a soccer ball and they got into the, onto the bus and left. And we, we, we sat there thinking to ourselves, that was the strangest thing we've ever experienced. We felt like zoo animals. Mm. And one of the things we've then spoke about was I'm how could that do be it. done differently? Do that. And one of the things that could have been done differently in that situation was they could have asked us our names. They could have come in and learned a little bit more about us and seen us less as people who are receivers but also people who are givers and people who, who can give and, and, and be in partnership with one another. And so I think the root of equity is genuine partnership. As much as we may have material possessions, 
um, those are not the substance of life. The substance of life is relationships with folks. And so, so not leading with material possessions, but leading with humility and vulnerability and, and openness and listening um, can then emerge what it is that needs to be done and what gaps can be filled. And then together you can fill those gaps. But the, the challenge with inequity is that we often lead with our money, we lead with our food, mm. we lead with our resources, and we lead with our power. Um, so, so reflecting on that would be important. So Warren, following up on that, so I hear the importance of relationships is just critical. And so another question that has just come in for us is relationship um, the divisions between our Republicans and Democrats, um, how much they disrespect each other. And would you use the tools for anti-racism to address and resolve these kinds of conflicts? And absolutely, absolutely. One of the things about radical love and radical justice, and I use the words of Valerie Kaur, K-A-U-R. She talks about radical love and radical justice, which is loving ourselves, loving the other and learning to love our opponents. And it, unless we can find ways to, to genuinely live and love one another, um, the divides will be deepened. And I live in a country in which divides were so deep that a whole system of government was created that dehumanized people. And so the implications of these divisions are actually incredibly important. And, and, I, and I truly believe that the tools that we have are one thing, but it's the heart and it's the courage and it's the energy of, of groups such as this and that I think um, will sustain those difficult moments, those difficult conversations. This work is hard, this work is incredibly tough, but if we can lead with empathy and compassion and courage and a commitment to justice and a commitment to learning, I truly, truly believe that we can um, find ourselves um, together. And I think, you know, Democrat, Republican, you know, in so many ways, they have similarities, um, but often we focus on what, what divides us. And I do think that there's some elements that we can focus on what unites us. Beautiful. Uh, <clears throat> another question that we're seeing, and I want to throw this to both of you. Um, we come from churches who want to include everybody no matter what. And it creates a situation where it's very hard for many um, to say anything other than what is very neutral. What would you say to churches who, who find the most important thing walking uh, in that balance, making sure everything is neutral? Tom, is there somebody else that we can share that question with? I'd love to reflect, but I'd love to give open up space for, for anyone else on that. Yeah, that, that'd be fabulous. Uh, Paul, I'd be interested in your response. Also, if there are other people who have a thought to that. Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's an important question. I think... Um, um, just speaking out of my own experience, um, I'm, I'm very much a people pleaser mm. and, uh, I've been around, uh, congregations enough and Presbyterians enough to know that we have lots of people pleasers, um, in our pews and, and in our pulpits and, um, people pleasers don't want to alienate anybody. Um, but that's not necessarily, I mean, that's not actually the way of Christ. Um, you know, I've, I've been every, every year, uh, during black history month, I read Martin Luther King's, uh, letter from Birmingham jail. And there's a line in that letter, um, in which Dr. King says, we prefer, um, th this isn't the exact language. Uh, but we prefer um, a, 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 a negative, um, shoot, I, I wish I had it, um, but I'm we just peace. Yeah, we prefer um, sort of a, a, a conflict that is below the surface rather than do the difficult work 
that goes with establishing peace. And that's very much what happens in the church. Um, rather than engage in a positive conflict and address issues, we avoid them. And uh, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus confronted the issues, uh, engaged in a constructive um, conflict when necessary with the idea that that would lead to a sort of positive resolution, a positive energy, a constructive force by which the kingdom would be built. So, you know, in these churches, I think it's hugely important for us to um, um, understand conflict as something that can be positive. Um, as long as we, as, as, as I heard um, earlier, brilliantly presented, you know, um, um, it's, it's essential. I, I, it's, it's, it's absolutely essential for us to understand and accept the fact that uh, we don't get to reconciliation um, without doing the very, very difficult work of having a conversation, not alienating anybody, not calling a name. Uh, Warren, you said it lovely. Um, don't just point the finger and say, you're a racist. That shuts conversation down. So, uh, two cents. I hope I answered. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. I'm wondering if I can see a show of hands, if you're comfortable, of people who would say your church is uncomfortable with tension. Tension, <laughs> yes. I mean, that's, that's a lot of us. And, but, and I would like to say, if, if that's okay, Tom, I'd like to just move into that process where I think that one of the things we... we which is so aptly put is the unjust silences, the unjust peace. Um, and, you know, just because we're not talking about it does not mean it's not there and it's not living under the surface. And often, you know, families, families have silences and secrets and things like that, that they know are there. There's actually a phrase for this called a Mokita, M-O-K-I-T-A. It's the silences that we know, but we never talk about. Hmm. And unless we find ways to talk about those things, what we end up having is proxies. We end up talking about having confrontations about other things because we're not prepared to deal with the roots of things. So for example, you know, you might have an event <laughs> and there might be heightened emotions around an event that, that on the surface seems very simple. But what we find is that underneath folks have not found the skills to communicate with one another and find one another. Um, in productive kinds of ways. And so one of the things that I, that I think is so critical in these conversations is for us to recognize that we have some common enemies. Indignity, poverty, <laughs> dehumanization, oppression, these are common enemies. These are common enemies. And we have to begin with a common understanding that um, Jesus, we all understand Jesus as a dignifying force and so if we can agree on that let's begin there and then we can slowly get to some spaces that are a bit more difficult to Go do on. but often mm -hmm. we begin with the difficult spaces and, and somehow think we're going to so found our ways to the to the bridge 45. awesome amen uh the, the the two of you are sharing so much it is hard to soak it all in to be fair um, somebody's asking a great question. Um, again, if, if, you, if you asked a question and you, you want to own it, feel free. Uh, I'm seeing in the chat what tools or resources are available to guide us in talking with, working with those with whom we disagree rather than just dismissing them. What tools are you aware of that are out there to help people enter into conversations? Yes, yeah, so there's actually a lot of people who have thought about this a lot. One of, one of the folks is Dr. David Kampt, C-A-M-P-T, David Kampt. And he wrote a book called The White Ally Toolkit. And one of the things he talks about is the role of white people in the church. 
and their their role in in dismantling the ways in which white and I talk for myself the ways in which I as a white person engage in racism for example how can I play a role to be an advocate and an ally um, in the work that I am doing right I don't want to say we as white people because I, I don't always think that's fair but to say that that I and what David Dr. David Camp does is he said he equips us with tools to ask questions to engage with empathy and curiosity instead of making statements and what he says is that when we shift folks into storytelling let me give you an example I was at a, at a conference once with a colleague of mine who said um you know, black people are very lazy, Warren. Black people are very lazy. And I thought, wow, this person is being very honest with me. Let me listen. Now, in, in the past, Warren would say, well, you know what, Stephen, you're a racist. I don't want to have this conversation. But what Dr. David Camp says is, let's shift the person into trying to understand what the roots of that experience was that are creating this thought. And so what we began to do is he began to tell me a story about his life and about a very negative experience that he had as a young child that has, that, has, that has marked him and his perspective throughout his life. And understanding that story, I didn't have to agree with him. I didn't have to argue with him. I had to listen and lean into his story. And once I could do that, he then said, Warren, tell me about you. Tell me about your life. Tell me about your story. And so we were not arguing about beliefs. We were arguing about experience. We were, we were engaging about experiences. Mm -hmm. And if we can do that, if we can lean into that empathy and, and ask those questions, we can then begin to merge those tensions and open up the space for the, for the next conversation. Dr. David Cam says, the goal of the conversation is to have the next conversation. So how are we doing that? And I think that that should always be our goal to, to build and work that relationship with, with folks. Mm. Uh, that, again, thank you for that, that thought. Hey, I want to take um, a couple of minutes. I want to shift our conversation uh, just a bit. Um, Anne and I want to shift it um, to, to Paul. Can you, um, I have to tell you, since you and I have been chatting, uh, I've gotten to learn a little bit about your seminary. And I'm wondering if you can just tell us um, a little bit about who you are in the seminary and what's going on. Thank you. Uh, I was just putting something in the chat. I think I did that incorrectly, but I'll correct it. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, I serve Johnson C. Smith Theological Seminary. I've served that institution now for uh, about 11 years. Um, it is a, a uh, historically black institution uh, affiliated with the Presbyterian Church from day one um, and is, is um, uh, originated in 1867. So I uh, guess we're, um, how, I can't do my math right now. Uh, but we're old and uh, um, really exceedingly uh, important as I see it. And I do have my biases being a product of that institution and now serving it, I have my biases. It is an institution that uh, for most of its um, uh, service to the church has gone about theological education in a very traditional way. Um, but uh, in uh, 2014, we decided to make some pretty radical shifts uh, because higher education has changed. Uh, the cost of education have uh, escalated uh, dramatically. Uh, church dynamics have changed and the leadership needs, the educational needs of the church have uh, um, uh, shifted as well. And so Johnson C. Smith Seminary decided to adapt. And uh, we, for all intents and purposes, um, shut down or left a campus and became a cyber institution. And so we deliver uh, theological education um, in a way that's very cost effective um, and is geared toward uh, equipping servants 
ordained servants and non-ordained servants in um, uh, uh, various tools that enhance, improve, develop, cultivate leadership. And we're really excited about the model. And uh, we've also, in these <laughs> seven years, we have um, drilled down on what it means to deliver justice-oriented theological that. education. And in, in uh, 2020, we engaged uh, in a partnership with the Presbyterian Mission Agency mm -hmm. to um, build a curriculum to accompany the Matthew 25 vision. And that has gone exceedingly well. We're really proud of that uh, relationship and the work that's being done. I'm looking forward to, to uh, how it unfolds in 2021. So, so Paul, I'm going to push you a little bit more on the Matthew 25, because I think that's something that um, a lot of our churches are interested in right now. Um, and so can you tell us just a little bit more if uh, my congregation wanted to take advantage or get involved with what Johnson C. Smith is doing with that initiative? Yeah, so uh, just a, a, a little more background about the Matthew 25 piece. We... Um, we conducted uh, three pilot courses last year, at the end of last year, um, um, three four week pilot courses. And we did all of it on Zoom uh, in real time. We gathered uh, people together uh, every Monday night uh, for the duration of, that, of the particular course and uh, we provided them with a Bible study and a um, presentation from a subject matter expert and then some small group time. And it was wonderful. And a lot of uh, oh, content, a lot of conversation emerged uh, from that process and all of it recorded. And so the idea in gathering people uh, for a total of 12 mm -hmm. weeks um, was, or, was to um, um, then gather that content, uh, including people's uh, um, chat with one another, um, all of the um, um, content presentations and the Bible study, and then uh, reformulate that into an online curriculum. And so um, from November, December, and through uh, the end of January, our team has been working on exactly that, reformatting, reformulating that content so that we can make it available to a wider variety of people. And I'm very proud to say that that content is going to be available um, in about two weeks. It will be live. Um, it's actually ready now, but um, um, we have to go over it with a fine tune comb, but it, fine tooth comb. Uh, but it will be live on our website uh, in about two weeks. And we would love for people to um, engage www.smithseminary.org um, and track along with us um, uh, to engage that content in the, um, uh, right after the middle of February. Ann and I have had several discussions about the ongoing um, texts and chats that we're seeing where many of you are saying we need the tools as educators. We may not be senior pastors, but we are educators. And if we can get the tools in our hands, we can start to be the difference and make a difference. And um, Paul, I have to tell you, when I saw um, that program a few weeks ago, many weeks ago when we first talked, I was so impressed with it because my own congregation was wanting to get involved. But the question is how, what's the next step? How do you get on the same page? And, um, I want to not only recommend the Matthew 25 program, but if you are interested in social justice, if you are interested in the challenging uh, work that is in front of us as brothers and sisters of Christ, uh, Johnson C. Smith uh, website is one you'll want to 
hold on to because there are several programs in there that I need to get my own congregation doing. Thank so you. one of the favorite things that I do in my spare time is I call myself a very proud member of the Board of Trustees for Johnson C. Smith. Um, I can't tell you how much I support um, to its very core, to my very core of what, what Johnson C. Smith is doing and where it is heading it's for such a time as this. So um, together, Paul, we will um, continue that. So I'm wondering as our time comes to an end, if each of you might just have some parting thoughts, some words of um, a charge to each of us, final words to, to send us off, not final, but um, concluding remarks for tonight that might help end our time together. Um, Warren, may I um, call on you to, to go f to start us off? What words do you have for us as we leave this gathering? Lead with love, lead with love. Okay. Paul? Yeah, you can't beat that. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God is good. God is good. God is good. We thank you both so much um, for what you've added. Uh, you, you really have been a blessing um, to Ann and I personally, but um, the entire conference, thank you for all you do. A round of silence applause. Or wave hands. Absolutely, or waving of hands, yeah. Now, we're not done tonight. Uh, there is more waving of hands from what I understand. Before we get to it, though, I think my, my man Josh has some... Some, oh, some pictures. I know, we're running late. We are. But Ann said to me, we're running late, and I said, I don't care. <laughs> uh, Paul and Warren, I, I got to hear more. Um, but I do know there's an incredible pictures you've all been sending in uh, that really have been speaking to us. And so I'm w wondering, Josh, if we're ready. There it is. Um, Are people going to Meta or not? So, um, no, let's just. We are going to have you real quickly. Uh, Josh, do we have that on um, what measuring Meta. tool do, are we using? Oh. All right. Zoom poll. So it's A, B, or C. So which one represents the creative exchange? Your poll will be coming up and vote very quickly because we want to acknowledge all of these pictures as we can. I'm telling you, it's got to be B. That's amazing. No, wait, we got to vote. Did they vote? Did they vote, Josh? And they picked B. B. Where are the pictures? Yeah, we, we can't see it for the poll. We can't see the poll? They can move the poll. Can't see any pictures. You, you, you can move can't the poll. the pictures through the poll. <laughs> yeah. The poll's in front of it. Okay. Move yeah. the poll. Just Put it drag out. the poll. Put your drag cursor it. on it and move it. Drag it. I've tried to. Go to the it. bottom and click on poll, and it'll disappear for a second. And then you click on poll, and then you can vote. There are no pictures. Okay, well, I, <laughs> we apologize for that. Uh, the pictures are there if you put it on speaker view. I'll tell you what. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> so B is the answer. So Josh, All right, there we go. People think it's B. What's the real answer, Josh? The real answer is A. <laughs> okay. I've, I've got to assume that's bread or bagels. Right. All right. Let's take it. Let's see how our next one works. Uh, can you read that? <sighs> so Don breaking in Guernsey Cove, PEI Canada, Pi Canada. New every morning is thy love. Which picture shows new every morning is thy love? Vote quick, quickly, A, B, or C. What are you going with? I can see the answers coming in. I'm going to go with C. <laughs> I want C. Sh you know, sh it's a little cold in Chicago where I'm from. Right. <laughs> so I'm after C. What's, what's our winner? B. B. <laughs> okay, not All bad. Right. Beautiful. Not bad. Next up. From a tiny seed. Ah. From a tiny seed. What beautiful pictures. Oh, my gosh. Whoever sent these Ooh. in, these are lovely. From a tiny seed. I'm going to go with A. Ooh, I'm going to go with C. Except those are bulbs. What is the, what's the answer? Oh. <laughs> Yay. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Next up. Family activity bags given out to our families. Huh? A, B, or C. I'd, <laughs> I'd like to get my percentage up, so I'm going to go with C, because it looks like there's bags back there. I mean, B, B, because there's bags back there, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. What do you got? What's the answer? That's a giveaway. Yeah, All that's right. a good one. That's great. <laughs> so many people are doing amazing things during these times. I'm so impressed. Okay, next, next up. First virtual conference. First virtual conference. What is wow. that us over there? <laughs> Because if it is, I did say this was the first ever, oh, didn't I? Yeah. I think I did. I'm sticking with A. All right. A looks good. What do you got, Josh? B. B. <laughs> Somebody else's first awesome. virtual conference. We're going to do a couple more. Oh, no, that's beautiful. I can't tell. What's the first word? Uh, uh, this this is, is Westminster Presbyteries. Presbyterian's Living Cross for Easter 2020. Hey. I'm with whoever said A. <laughs> Amen. What is it, Josh? Cool pictures. Very I'm cool. I'm still <laughs> seeing the tiny seed. All right. I don't see the picture for that one. Weaving a new chair seat. Weaving a new chair seat. A, B, or C. I think I'd go with A, too. I would, too. What we have for an answer to that one, Josh? So, hey, perfect. Right. And here is our last slide for the night. Darkness to light epiphany. A drive up walk worship. Darkness to light epiphany. Mm. B. I'm going with B. I'm going to go with C. What do we got, Josh? B. Yay. All right. I should have made that worth Bucky's costume. <laughs> um, thank you, Josh, for that game. Pictures. It is really awesome. 